Welcome back everybody, my name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus channel. If you're new to my channel and you have no idea what you're doing here, I'm just going to let you know that this channel focuses on specialty family pets such as reptiles, amphibians, and arachnids. So if you like those types of critters, stick around and don't forget to subscribe down below and then ding the notification bell afterwards so that you know when the next video comes out. In today's video, we are going to be focusing on Vlad the Impaler's offspring. Vlad is my recently deceased Theraphosa sturmi, which is the burgundy goliath bird-eating tarantula. Don't worry, it's all in the name. They, they quite seldomly eat birds, if ever. Common names in the tarantula hobby, just, just stay away from those. Everything's a Mexican this, a banded this, a bird-eating that, a baboon. Just stick to Latin if you can. So, unfortunately, I had a few of Vlad's babies pass on me. One of them actually somehow contracted nematodes. I immediately isolated the animal from the collection to ensure that it wouldn't somehow transfer to other animals. I still can't figure out what happened. I took some different types of anti-parasitic medication diluted in water, such as Panicure, to try and treat the animal. And somehow it actually seemed to be working for a little while, but then I later found out that that type of medication doesn't work well on nematodes, so unfortunately that animal passed. I also had an animal molt out and just refuse food for the life of it. It was so strange. It wouldn't eat anything and it just sort of withered away and perished. I don't know what to attribute it to. The reality is these animals produce large sacs. It's quantity over quality. Although Theraphosa produce smaller sacs than say Elasiodora of a similar size, but still, you have to remember that if you have a hundred slings, some of them will just kind of fail to thrive and may pass away and are easy food options for predators. After losing the two, I was left with 10. One of which though is right now not really thriving. It's not eating. I don't know what's going on. I've flipped it over. I don't see any noticeable mites or anything like that. Really don't know what it is. I hope it can survive long enough to molt and sort of figure out its issues and come around. They seem to be doing okay for the most part besides that one. So yes, those guys have been growing and eating like little piggies and a lot of them have started molting into fourth instar. Some of you might actually own some of Vlad's babies if you're living in Canada and they might even be ahead of the game. If you're unfamiliar with my way of doing things, I don't really believe in power feeding. And if you're unfamiliar with power feeding, it's the idea of feeding the animal until it goes into pre-molt and molts for you. I mean, that can still take a long time between the pre-molt and the molting, but it's the idea that you're gonna give the animal the resources it needs constantly and it'll just keep taking them and taking them and grow faster. You look like you enjoyed that, Brucey. And if it were to sort of naturally come across a prey item maybe every few weeks So that seems to be my routine and as such you end up with spiders that grow a little more slowly So that's how I like to do things my animals are healthy They live a little longer because their growth is more natural and yeah, it's just a matter of preference for today's question of the day I want to ask you guys how often do you feed your tarantulas and how often do you think is the appropriate amount of time you should be having between each feeding? Let me know in the comment section down below and as always I'll give your comment a heart and engage in a bit of a conversation with you. So let's get right into it guys. So in today's video what we're going to be doing is rehousing all those bird eaters into new containers because they've outgrown their deli cups big time, especially the ones that have hit fourth instar. I'm gonna rehouse them, and then we're also gonna see if any of them will take some food. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do with our containers is take some of our soil mix and fill them up for the animals to have a great moist substrate. The mix that I'm gonna be using is a combination of organic black earth, as well as some Zilla jungle mix. I find that this combined together serves as a fantastic moisture retaining blend and also allows for the animals to do some burrowing should they choose to. Now what we'll do is add some exoterra forest moss as a sort of dressing to enrich the environment and also facilitate in holding humidity in the bin. Next, we'll take a nice piece of treated wood from outside that'll serve as a shelter for the animal. I'm also adding a few oak leaves to the bin for further enrichment so the animal can hide under, look for prey under them, or even web over them. We'll add a small takeout cup as a water dish that'll be filled with some clean, fresh water. And there you go, it's all done. Perfect little enclosure to help raise these guys to the next level. Hey guys, 
right, so here we go. We have a container prepared for a sling. And here is one of the stermies. Let's go ahead and move them into this container. Well, that works. I was worried there'd be a lot more hair kicking involved, but I'm happy with that. Now, let's see if they'd like to have a little snack. Here we go. Look at that tongue feeding. <laughs> That's awesome. So, you may also have noticed that I've switched to wearing a long sleeve shirt, and that is just to help as much as possible to reduce the exposure to irritating hairs on my skin. If you're unfamiliar with this genus, they have some of the worst as far as how people react to them. So I'm just trying to protect myself a little bit. All right, so sling number two. I'm gonna gently try to coax them. I have a hunch there's gonna be some hair kicking here because this animal is being a bit more flighty. I don't know, let's see what happens. Okay, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. Go this way. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. There you go. Let me help you down. There you go. There you go. Alright, perfect. Looks like this one recently molted to fourth in star, so you're going to see a size difference here. I hope that also doesn't mean that the animal is going to be more of a hair kicker but look at that very very beautiful tarantula the old molt is here so let's gently coax them you can tell that they're like not super freshly molted they can walk just fine but yeah big size difference look at that go ahead the thing i love about these animals is as they mature and continue to grow they have this like kind of pokey striping down where the eyes are i'll point it out to you do you see what i'm talking about there just like or like mascara or i don't know what to say like some battle like war paint on their face it just makes them look really cool but anyway as this animal hardens after that molt they're gonna go back to that nice burgundy color so Perfect. Well, I mean, obviously we're not going to offer this spider food too soon after the molt. But yeah, they're now rehoused, and that's what's important. Okay, so this is the questionable tarantula, the one that's like not thriving. Um, we'll rehouse it next. As you can see, it's sort of frail. Those little spots there on its body, those are water droplets because I've been trying to keep it hydrated. It does have some energy at least, which is great, but I don't want to have it expend that just from moving. Yeah, I really don't know what to do. It's not eating, so I just really hope we can get it to molt. Hopefully. But yeah, good job, buddy. So that's another one done. All right, here we have another lovely, what looks to be fourth instar. Spider's probably gonna be hungry. Its abdomen looks pretty small, so. I don't wanna jinx things, but I can't believe that these spiders have been so tolerant of my coaxing. Oh. Uh-oh. And this is why we always have a catch cup handy. Nice and easy. Usually with these guys, you don't have to worry about these things as much because they don't like bolt like some arboreals do, but. Okay, okay, okay. Holy mackerel, that one's really a uh, feisty sling. Okay, okay. Just gotta watch the toes. Okay. Okay, so this is a third inch star sling.
Excuse me. I'm trying to get you to cooperate. Please and thank you. Now remember, you don't want the lip like this because then they're going to follow it and come over the edge. And that's when you get into all sorts of problems where they're running around like that. Remember, they don't see well. So you want to line the lip or the edge of this container they're coming out of with the one they're going into so that they just follow the surface area down. So if we do it like this, we should be okay. Yeah, there we go. You're good. There you are. Perfect. That's wonderful. Hope you like your new home. Check it out. The carapace within the carapace. I'm not sure if we can see the pump stomach, but as you may or may not know, tarantulas shed their stomachs, which is super interesting. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, that works for me. Man, I love this species. Sometimes it's not always about color. Look how gorgeous that spider is. I gotta say, it's really impressive. Why don't we try feeding them a cricket? Woo! Nice. Great takedown. Now that is a happy spood if you ask me. Okay friends, hard to believe there are only three slings left. So we have another third instar. We're gonna be transferring into here. All right. See how I lift the lid slowly? The thing that spooks these guys is sudden movements, air currents, things like that. So if you're gonna synchronize and move slowly, it really helps prevent a fearful reaction from the animal. Just take your time, there's no rush at all. You just gently coax the animal like so. And notice how I'm always kind of gently tapping the leg that I need to tap for it to move in the direction I want it to move. So I'm not just pushing it or anything like that. I'm just gently coaxing the animal exactly where I need it to go. And then that'll happen once in a while because as you can imagine, it's going in the opposite direction of familiarity. There's webbing down that it's set on the substrate. That's its home. So it doesn't wanna to go to the foreign place or it just wants to make me look like a fool because I said that if you do what I said before, it'll facilitate the rehousing. And this one is like, uh-uh, you're wrong. You have to just push me right out. Come on, you're okay. If I push the back legs, they're just gonna run forward and we don't want that. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go, there we go, there we go. And down you go. Oh my goodness. I jinxed that one. Come on. There you go. Perfect. All right. Second last tea. I think we figured this out for the most part now. Honestly, I can't believe these guys haven't been hair kicking. This is just so lucky. Go ahead. Nice third in star. Down, down, down. There you go. Perfect. All right, the last sling we're gonna rehouse. I think this is also just a third instar, but a really chubby one. So let's gently coax them out. Actually, it might be a fourth instar. Kind of hard to tell. No, I think it's a third. Yep, there you go, friend. Beautiful. This one definitely doesn't need any food. Like I said at the start of the video, I like for their abdomens to not be much larger than or slightly smaller than their carapace. So as you can see, that is not the case currently. That is a voluptuous booty. But yeah, guys, there we go. We just rehoused everybody. I put the slings that didn't eat aside, so I figured we could try once more with them. But then, uh, yeah, that'll kind of be it afterwards. So let's go ahead and feed some of those slings. Nice. All right, last but not least. Woo! What a takedown. That was awesome. 
Super cool. Well done, buddy. Hey, 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 hey. Don't get any funny ideas. You're staying in there. Okay, well, there you have it, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's always so satisfying to be able to rehouse your animals into larger enclosures that'll stimulate them more and offer more enriching environment for them. So if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you like this content, definitely consider checking the playlist up above to see my Goliath Tarantula playlist where you can see more content about these amazing animals. My name is Diane, and as always, I look forward to seeing you guys in another video again soon. Take care.